Well, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the 2017 Megaware Keel Guard R&B Bass Circuit Classic at Holton Lake. I want a round of applause for yourselves at getting here. It's been a fun season, to say the least, and uh, I'm going to give you some great information this evening. We've got a lot of things to talk about. I do, uh, and you know I have a never shortage on words, so quit rolling your eyes back there, gentlemen. You want to enjoy this. But really, uh, this is kind of a special night for me in the sense that nine years ago, Kevin Rybecki and I came up with the idea of the R&B Bass Circuit. If you didn't know the name behind that, it's R for Kevin Rybecki and B for Annie Buss. We're in love with our names, of course, but secondly, it was catchy. But our real goal nine years ago was maybe if we run this right, we might average 30 votes a turn. Maybe. And we did that in the second season, as you're aware. And tonight, you know, I'm standing before you, and we got two divisions who came together that both averaged over 30 votes a tournament. So it's been pretty awesome, awesome ride for the last nine years. I say nine years. This is our eighth year that we, we started playing well in advance. The reality was we, we fished a lot, and we wanted to have a circuit that we felt like would run for you. I say you. Us, of course, too where the money went back to the anglers, it wasn't run for the tournament directors, and it was professional, but yet cordial and friendly. Uh, with that said, you know, no favors for friends. And I wish Paul Holliball was here. I wish Paul was here. He's got a, his, his partner could have come this evening. And it was very difficult for me to say, we can't partner up with anybody else. But that was part of the idea of the R&B when we got it together, was we will enforce the rules even for friends we're going to enforce them and not make favors. So, um, it, you know, it's a special night. Our philosophy is always to what comes first. We want to pay back 100%. And the feedback we've had in the last eight years, nine years, has been pretty outstanding. Uh, I don't know if anybody has ever had the opportunity to stay, have a phone conversation with John Marquardt. Where are you at, John? Yeah. Have you ever, if he ever calls you, answer. I'm telling you, the most entertaining 30 minutes of your life, maybe one, if you're lucky. But you always I'm, call me back. You always call me back. <laughs> I'm not going to miss that, but I don't have to. Uh, I had the pleasure of talking to John on the phone for a couple, oh, 30 or 45 minutes, two or three weeks ago. And he made the comment, he, he, uh, usual, he thanked me uh, for the R&B Bass Circuit and everything, everything we do. But he made the comment, like, you know, the one thing about the R&B is that you, the tournament directors, and he was including myself, John, but also Jim and Greg, are very easy to talk to and very approachable. And we take that, actually we take it seriously, even though it sounds like a laid back atmosphere there, we take it seriously and we want to be a part of that. And we, frankly, we, we got the best members. Um, the, the East Division finale on Winona, Charlie Doyle, Charlie Randall, excuse me, seven-year-old young man, came and fished with, with Doyle. And I got a text message later that evening from Doyle saying that Charlie, from the moment they got in the truck, all the way home, and through the evening, talk over and over and over. Could not stop talking about how wonderful all of us treated him and made him feel welcome. And I'm telling you, you know as well as I do, it only takes a few jerks to ruin it for everybody. We don't have that. You guys are an outstanding group, outstanding members in the Army Bass Circuit. I've said it for years. We're a fantastic circuit. You better believe it. Not because of myself. Lord knows not because of John. And not even Greg or Jim, but because of you guys. You guys are outstanding people. So thank you for that. We emphasize sportsmanship at all our tournaments. And when you get that kind of feedback about Charlie Randall, who, as we all know, will probably be taking our money as well in 12 years, just like Frank and uh, Doyle, it, it means a lot. Um, speaking of the Randalls, if you haven't heard, they've got a family crisis uh, right now at home. So as uh, you have a moment, say a prayer for them as well. They were here. And probably fixing to win this tournament, but they had to rush home last night, late last night. So, like I said, if you have a moment to uh, pray for them, I think that's a great idea. I have somebody else I want to recognize, too. And he doesn't know I'm going to recognize him. Give me one second here. <laughs> Steve <laughs> Prang, where are you at, buddy? <laughs> he called me a jerk. Family friendly atmosphere, Steve. 
Uh, as I said, this is our eighth season. There's one member in this room, besides me, who has their name tied into every single RB tournament, or shall I at least say six tournaments per year since our inception. Steve Prang. He's been a member of the RB every single year. He hasn't missed a tournament. We got uh, recognized Joe Donardo. He's been a member of all eight years as well. Missed three tournaments, though, in 2012. Steve has now, Steve did not fish the East last year, but fished the East and the West this year. So, Steve Prang is somebody we want to recognize. Uh, I had to get these pictures just to prove that, yes, he actually can catch fish once in a while, even though his uh, points might suggest otherwise. I have a YouTube link here. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see what we got here, Steve. Uh, how, how we do? Uh -oh. uh, We're going too far here. There it is. Well, how do you do this thing? Uh, well, dog on it. Oh, I ruined that, didn't I? No, you know how to turn around. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what. I want to share that link on Facebook tonight. And we're really proud of Steve. Uh, Steve is a, a diehard WWE fan. If you can see his face right now. Actually, what's really cool is his daughter who signed up with Vince McMahon at WWE not too long ago, back in the first of the year. And uh, I think that's pretty awesome. And he presented an opportunity for Steve to go watch his daughter perform in Chicago on TV, which was cool because... Even the best part was, as some character in WWE got, you know, demolished and beat over the head with a chair and was being escorted uh, out on a stretcher. In the background, the camera literally went right by our very own Stephen Prang, and the whole world gets to see Stephen at the WWE. And let me tell you, he looked enthusiastic. <laughs> And if looks could kill, I'd be dead right now, but that's all right. Honestly, we love the people like Steve, and we love people like you. Thank you again. Uh, it would be foul of me not to recognize the quality of people that have fishing with us. Okay. We do have some big news. How do we turn this backwards? Up arrow. Up arrow, huh? What's the big news? Part of our philosophy two years ago changed a little bit. And the philosophy was we always want to grow. And we were, let's face it, three years ago we were averaging nearly 60 boats a tournament. We were having a fantastic time. But we were faced with the reality of this. We weren't going to grow more. And we knew that. We don't have the bodies of water, nearly the really resources as well, to get much bigger than that. So when Jim Graham and Greg Breckaway came up to me and John, actually, and Suggested let's do a second division. It was scary, but I did not like losing 50 boat tournaments. I didn't like losing that. But it presented the opportunity for us to grow. And this year really proved that. We made more money. We had more money yesterday in our classic pot with five tournaments to go than we ever had accumulated throughout the entire season this year. Our payout is tomorrow is going to exceed $10,000. And, and that is a direct reflection of. Yeah, I think it's quite worthy too. Ten thousand bucks of your money going back to you, and it's been a big success. And we have, well, I want to say we got a third division. We're going to start 2018. It's going to be a South Division, and you know the guys who are going to run this division because they're really good at taking our money in the past several years. With two out of 2014, I believe they were the season champions as well. Uh, John Gibson Jr. and Tom Miller are going to start running the South Division. And John's going to come here and say a word or two about that. The, here's where he needs help is to spread the word. Because he's going to be out of the Monticello area where we don't have a lot of members yet. But I think it's about time we do. And think about next year, instead of fishing for 10 grand, let's fish for 14 grand. Instead of having 45 teams qualify, let's have 65 or 75 qualify. Uh, we keep growing the roof as the first guy say the sky is the ceiling. But here, John gets into you and talk about the self division. <laughs> so the self division next year should be a pretty fun time. 
Uh, we're going to fish Freeman and Schaefer four times, three times on Schaefer, one time on Freeman. We'll fish one time on Manistee, and we're going to fish one time on Fastwood. Uh, we don't have dates for all the tournaments because we have to get the ramps down at Lake Schaefer and Lake Freeman. So later this year they'll let us do it, but we're definitely going to open on the 14th or 15th, and we're probably going to use an Indiana Beach ramp, this way it's large enough. Uh, second year, if we can't get that, then we'll go to the Monon ramp. Have any of you guys fished Schaefer before? It's a good lake, great lake, lots of smallmouth in Lake Schaefer. Freeman can be a little tough sometimes, but definitely some big, big smallmouth in Lake Schaefer. The September tournament should be awesome. You can fish the lake, you can fish the river, there's a big monon that you can go back into. There's not really many places to fish down there either, so most of the tournaments I've been in had 30, 40, 50 boats, because you pretty much have Freeman Schaefer, or you have to drive up to Manitou, or you'll have to drive down to Indianapolis to get to Geist Reservoir. Uh, so if you guys know anyone around the Monticello area, Lafayette area, tell them about the circuit. It'll be up on the R&B page. We'll do some stuff on Facebook as well to promote it. Thanks, Andy. Thank you, Jeff. And that's good news for us. We figured what we were 30 years ago or nine years ago. Let's have three divisions of average 30 or plus boats or 40 boats next year. Imagine how big. We're going to be in a much bigger room than this. Uh, let's spoil the secret a little bit. You know what's coming next. We're going to talk about our schedules. These are not lock and stone, but uh, we're going to let Greg talk about, Jim, excuse me, talk about the East schedule here as well. All right, we are going to uh, kick off the uh, season as we have the last two years with Hamilton. It's always a good draw. It's a good spring lake. Uh, we're going to move to James. Uh, one thing that we wanted to do this year is we wanted to make sure we went to lakes that didn't fish small. We fished a couple lakes this year that were kind of small, and uh, we do not want that to happen again. So we're going back to uh, James this year. Uh, our annual trek in June to St. Clair. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wouldn't miss that one. Uh, we're going back to the Waffle Farm. Uh, fish Randall. I didn't fish real well two years ago. It, it was a tough fight, but there's a lot, there's plenty of room for us to spread out, and it won't feel like we're all fishing the same water in a big circle. Uh, we're going to go back to Wallace Sea, and then we're going to end up at Coldwater. So, hope to see you all out for the East Division. There you go, Jim. This will be a low point of the night when uh, John Pond's going to come up here and talk about the West Division schedule. So I'll come on up here, John. This is about as much as any of us can talk all year. So, <laughs> All right, as you guys can see, we're going to start off with Tippy and then move on to Wallace, Winona, the river, and then uh, Webster and Max and Cuffy. I think the one thing you've noticed that, uh, that's different about our schedule this year from the last couple of years is that we don't have any Michigan lakes on this year's schedule. It really, it really just came down to numbers. It came down to us looking at our last couple of years, and I'm glad Andy let me uh, announce the schedule so you guys get mad at me. But, but uh, it came down to numbers. It's all it really came down to. We looked at our numbers over the last three or four years up there. And we weren't just we just weren't drawing we weren't just we just weren't drawing the numbers that we needed for to justify going up there. So we're gonna try something different. Also what you don't notice about the dates because you probably haven't realized yet, but all the dates are Sundays. We're gonna we're gonna move to a Sundays except for uh Wynona, correct? Well I see. The May the May uh, 12th turn will be on a Saturday Well I see, but the rest of them will be on Sundays. We're trying to avoid conflicts with other circuits, and Andy's done a really good job this year of reaching out to other circuit directors and trying to, so we can all avoid kind of conflicts on the weekends. So that's pretty much it as far as I can. Thank you, John. Uh, there, yes, Mike. Um, with the South Division, is that going to affect uh, your choice for the Classic next year? <laughs> 2018 classic. I don't want to know where, where but is it? We, no, we want to know where. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> what are you messing around, Mike? No, nope. what it's going to affect is the overall payout that John and I are going to recruit as many people as possible. And there's going to be a ton of more money coming in for the classic. No, is it going to affect where the classic's at? No. 
Maybe in this regard. Maybe in this regard. To be honest, right now, uh, Holton Lake. I know everyone's gonna point at me uh, for the butt tough bite and always picking a bad body of water. I know I get the blame. I'm, I'm a good scapegoat. But it rains. Everything else. R and B stands for the Raincoat and Boot Bass Circuit. Now we got that one <laughs> many, many years ago. <laughs> Don't believe it? Wake up tomorrow morning, you'll know why. But hopefully they came through with Jim, Greg, and John, and myself. Next year there'll be six people who have decided that, and Tom and John will have a big say in that as well. Now, with that said, we are not going to uh, release classic destinations tonight. We don't know. Um, we are essentially going to see where is our best fit. We're going to see what we can get for you. I'm going to put it that way. I'm going to see what we can get for you. We travel with 150 people next year to a classic. We're going to make that beneficial for you. So we got to have a body of water. We also going to find, we're going to find a community that wants us here. The very chance we go south. <laughs> you want to go south, Mike? No, the very chance that we go south. Very little. Yeah. Yeah. Very little. <laughs> I mean, let's see. Anyone want to go south? Who's got the gun to say go south? You are way out number now, my friend. So. No, we, I, I think it's fair to say we, we want to catch brown fish if we can. Um, that's, I know a lot of us think in October classes, we think brown fish. I'm sorry, was that John? Yeah, John. Do you have a, like, a day that you, are you guys doing Saturday or Sunday tournaments or are you just trying to set them in where you can? Yeah, we'll set them in where we can. We, we tried to miss the east and the west and we won't fish on the same day. East or west, and we try to miss the big tournaments. And there's some tournaments we got 40, 50 boats on Schaefer tournaments, but we don't want to fish that same. Right. As well as other tournaments that we fish. Yeah, yeah. We're trying to add to what you guys already fish. Yeah. Well, I understand. I just didn't know if you guys had to find a day that was going to work better for the South or not. It will be interesting to see where everybody ends up. Uh, being out of the Monticello area, and you saw their, their tentative schedule, I think they're going to end up recruiting a lot of new R&B members. And when you add members, you're talking about membership fee for all of them. Uh, do the math this way. With 15 new teams and a 15 vote average, that adds a little over $2,000 to a class of five. That's how much how much value 15 boats have. I'm pretty good they'll average more than 15. Imagine they had 30, and you're talking well over 4,000 dollars being added to our pocket. So, I appreciate the questions. Are there others? We are extraordinarily grateful for our sponsors. I do want to recognize well, let's call our vendors here. <laughs> Bus is not too smart with technology. He can talk, but that's about it. Randy and Jason, we want to really thank you for coming out tonight, being on custom baits. If you haven't had a chance to check out their hand poured baits, you should. The plastic is phenomenal. Uh, but they've been donating to us all year long. And when I say they're donating to us, they're been donating to you. Uh, guys, can you tell me how much free stuff I've got from y'all here? Nothing. I've got anything, Norris, John, Jim, or Greg. I'd like some free stuff, but no. I mean, when we have sponsors, sponsors for you. That goes back nine years ago when we, Kevin and I talked, sponsors. You know the reputations of term directors making out big time with the sponsors. They keep it. We don't. We pay back 100% and we give back 100% of everything we got. So thank you, Randy and Jason, all year long, and thank you for coming out tonight. Uh, their thanks are still for sale when I'm done talking and we're playing cards. Uh, this stuff still for sale, so if you haven't had a chance to check it out, please do so. Dean, Mark Fennell over there. Um, Awesome stuff for how many years now, Mark? 10? Probably yeah. 10, 11 years, and uh, the reputation has been well earned. Uh, Pro X Outfitters, of course, over in the east side, you know them very well. Uh, it's got a lot of great stuff for sale over there, and thank you, Greg, for your support these past couple of years. But all of our other sponsors, Clearwater Tackle, did an amazing thing for us when we had a tournament at Eagle Juno. Uh, if you weren't there, they brought drinks and food for everybody at the tournament. The only unfair thing is that the owner finished second and took our money. Darren's a great fisherman as well. Granite Creations. Uh, John DuPont got in touch with them. They do granite work. You think of like your kitchen countertops and so forth. Well, they donated $200 cash. Saw some good looking hats over here with $100 bills on. We're going to give out the 50 50. 
granite creations uh, provided that for us. Uh, NES State Police, our state trooper, Mr. John DuPont, as well, uh, got some hats, but also some really nice knives that we're going to hand out in a few moments as well. Loch Ness Lures has been donating all year long. East Division with uh, some gift certificates. They've got a prize package of about $100 value that's going to the first team out of the money tomorrow. And we have how many teams signed up? 39, is that correct? We have exactly 40 teams, which means we're going to pay out 10 spots. So you count the Loch Ness Lures Award being for 11th place tomorrow. $100 value. Native Pride Tackle has been sponsoring our big bass of both divisions all year long. And they got a really nice prize package for the big bass winner tomorrow as well. What do you think? Six pounder tomorrow? Can we get it into the record book again? Mike, how big is it going to be tomorrow? Uh, it's not going to be us, I guarantee you that. Uh, <laughs> He's modest tonight. Goodness sakes. Right? <laughs> 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 Waiting for your flags and money, you're going tonight, right? All right. All right. Johnny, get how big that big match will be, Mom. <laughs> Even tell me he hasn't caught a pass, a rock pass, or walleye, nothing for two days. Do you see how large that nose is? Holy smokes, man. It's going to be a green one. I'll take it. Okay. Who wants to bet, Mike? Yeah, I didn't think so. Nobody wants to bet against you, Mike. You know, being in custom days, I'll back up, talk about it just for a moment. Custom is a nice word. Uh, what he just said to me just now, he said, if you have ideas of baits, it's a custom bait business, let him know. And he can work with you on that, try to come up with something exactly the way you want. Custom colors, but custom baits. So he takes that word quite seriously. And, and uh, you know what I'm saying. Rod Bender Baits, of course, has been donating all year long and uh, sponsoring and giving product to our winners all year long. Extreme Bass Tackle had the Mystery Bait at Wyoming Lake on East Division this year. That was about $350 worth of money and products that he, Wayne Carpenter, provided. We can't be more happy with our sponsors and want to emphasize that our sponsors are not mine, they're not John's, they're not Greg's or Jim's, they're your sponsors. So, talk about numbers real quick. That growth thing, that's our philosophy, what we're trying to do. 202 members in 2018, by far and large our biggest ever, and that's why we got $10,000. John, you're like that student who won't show up in class right now, what's going on here? That is a 12 year old boy, the other kid, yeah, alright. Now we are in school. Now we are in school. Those of us who are watching on Facebook Live, John Marfort, and we do have the best members here. It was him. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> give me some more numbers, though. I'm going to try to give you some more numbers. Maybe you take them out. <laughs> Phone calls, Mike. That's it. John, excuse me. Okay. East Division this year paid back over $13,700. The West Division paid back over $12,500. We're going to pay back over ten grand tomorrow. We're going to exceed over $37,000 being paid back to you guys this year. Now, that number to me is pretty, pretty awesome. But again, the idea is growth. So instead of 202 members next year, uh, why not 300? Why not? Why not pay out 15 grand next year's class? Why not pay out 50 grand total next year? Let's make the IRS come after us. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. Uh, payback tonight or tomorrow. <laughs> Jim Graham is actually charging on this IRS. <laughs> uh, what we will do is. And we're going to play cards. Uh, those are the ones stay and, and uh, gamble a little bit, and the proceeds are going to go to tomorrow's class again. Uh, we will post on Facebook sometime tonight. We have it all figured out exactly what first place is going to get second, all the way down to a big bass. But we'll post that on Facebook, meaning the MegaWare Keel Guards Facebook page. If you have not liked their Facebook page yet, you should. They got a lot of cool stuff that they post there. It's not just boasting about their products, which, of course, are the best in the business. 
Um, they, they take care of and pre they prevent damage. Unfortunately for John, they don't have um, hair loss preventative products yet, but um, maybe that'll come someday for you too. <laughs> don't last at that, huh? Okay, so now it's time to recognize some real accomplishments this year. I'm going to hand the mic over to Jim or Greg, whichever, and they want to recognize the East Division specifically, and then of course their receiving team as well. Jim Graham. Greg. Greg. All right. First of all, we'd like to thank those uh, people who stepped up on a, on a regular basis every week to help us out. I want to make sure I don't forget anybody. Mark Barber and Steve Klein, thank you very much. Aaron Kreider, Aaron Kreider and Bob Bruick, thank you very much. Uh, Mike Lytle and Colin Maple. I tied it over here. I'm calling it. There he is. Well, I missed you there. Put your head down, I guess. Stand up, John. <laughs> hey, don't Matt Gardner and Josh Ware. Thanks, guys. Thank you. I, I know along the way there's been uh, a lot of you that have stepped up in the, to fill a role to help with parking or help get boats backed in or, you know, anything. And, and we, you know, we appreciate that as well. Uh, it makes our job a lot easier every week and, and to know that that's, be, that's being handled in a, in a professional top-notch manner. So thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. All right. Our season champions, Bear Greva and Mike Kavinsky. Come on up. <laughs> Just to give you a, a, a little rundown, third heaviest weight total and point total ever. Two victories this season, seven total, most of any team in history. Third on the most top five, third on the all-time money winners for $8,974. really is. <laughs> All right. Beautiful. Congratulations, Barry and Mike. Um, the, the interesting point that, that Jim didn't make. They have fished the RB for three seasons. Three seasons, and they have three plaques that say season champions. East Division, I'm begging you. Somebody please beat them. Please. Actually, you know what? We might have some help. Congratulations, Barry. You are engaged. You are engaged. The lucky lady is uh, Nicole... Right? Uh oh, no, no, I screwed up. She's, uh, she's probably watching tonight, right? Maybe. What's her name then? Tabitha. Tabitha. Right. Get the cold oh, Tabitha. That's my <laughs> wife, your wife. Tabitha. Tabitha. That's his girlfriend. Don't let him fish anymore. <laughs> He's killing us here. Anyway, we're hoping maybe the whole marriage thing in the new house, you can't fish as much as the world. At least he's in the Okay, West Division. We have, John and I have a number of people to thank as well. Again, the compliments of the Army Bass Area is a direct reflection of you and those who help. Mark Barber and Steve Klein, that's the name you're going to hear a lot. Not only are they outstanding fishermen, but they help out all the time, uh, both divisions, and they've done a number of things for us this year. Tim Pugh and Dan Truex, awesome. I mean, you talk about people who are quality people. Can't catch fish, but outstanding people, Tim and Dan. Thank you very much for everything you've done this year. I am number one. Thank you, Tim. Tim. Jason Ginn, who's not here with us tonight, helped us out all year long. Uh, Steve Prang, he's uh, he's our guy. Yeah. <laughs> he's not happy with me. But Steve, thank you for your help this year. He's another guy who's helped out. His partner Josh Stoutsa helped out a number of occasions. And Steve Janichowski, 
uh, usually at the ramp six hours before take off and takes care of everything for its worker at Steve. Thank you very much for everything. We recognize the West Division uh, season champs right now being Mark Farber and Steve Klein. If you guys come forward. So we are, John and I are extremely proud uh, to recognize the two of you this evening. Thank you. Congratulations. Now, you can put the clock down here, but come right back up. We got a little Q&A. We're going to have a little bit of fun with Steve and Mark. Bear, come on back up, please. And Mike, come back up, please. That in my eyes, how deep, how, how deep you catch them? <laughs> but 
And we've been whacking them in about 25 foot of water out here. This one. <laughs> That's where the big smallmouth are. If you guys want to go for smallmouth fishing, 25 foot's where it's at. So, here you go, Andy. <laughs> that big. Okay, you know, there's a couple people in there and I'm taking metal notes, 25 foot of water. Okay. Next question from Mark Farber. If you had to narrow it down, Mark, to one fact that has been the key to your success, your deceits, what is that one fact? Uh, you know, probably, I mean, Steve and I have been fishing together for 25 years, just chemistry uh, between us. Hey, we're we, fishing, not dating. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of the same. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> Cuddly bear. Cuddly bear. Cuddly <laughs> bear. <laughs> but I'd say that's probably, I mean, just, uh, just spending the time and, um, that's probably it. Just the chemistry. And experience. Chemistry and experience. <laughs> John, you and I got a long way to go there. All right, next question. <laughs> Jeff, this is Steve. Speaking of the two of you together, all that chemistry, how do you compliment, how would you say you compliment each other on the water? Strengths, weaknesses, how do you compliment each other when you fish together? Oh, well, you know, when I first met Mark, I started fishing the LaGrange County Club, and he liked to fish real shallow, I liked to fish real shallow, and it was just easy to get along. We've done the same thing. We didn't have to argue about where we wanted to fish. You just made it easy. Easy, easy on the water. Thank you. Good answer. Good answer. Thank you. Next question is from Mike. Mike, on your boat, it's not going to be a better boat. What does teamwork look like? It depends how much they party on Friday night. <laughs> uh, you know, uh, we fish a lot of new water, and you know, the more we get experience, we get on lakes that we've known. And uh, you know, some things I remember, some things I don't. You know, and Bear, you know, he's a different person. His perspective of the world is different than mine, so he remembers different stuff than I do. You know, he'll bring up stuff, and we'll bounce stuff off each other. And I don't know, we kind of come up with game plans, you know, like, I, sometimes I'm kind of mean to him, I, you know, if you bring up something and I'll say, no, it ain't gonna happen, but, you know, he'll still bounce stuff off of me, and, and I'll ask him to, and, you know, I don't know, we, we work together pretty good as a team, I mean, uh, as long as you listen to you, you get along. Yeah, sometimes there's no choice for him. It's, just, it's my boat, we go where we go. But, you know, everybody knows he's a great fisherman, and I know he's a great fisherman, so uh, I don't know. I think just we get along well. Uh, like I said, his perspective is different than mine. We just bounce stuff off each other, and sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. That's fishing. As long as you can get him up in the morning, huh? <laughs> Thank you, Mike. Well, that's changed since habits has come on. Just out of course. All right, next question is from Mark. You guys fish both divisions. Uh, I don't know how to feel you were under a rock all year long. Mark and Steve won the West, finished second by what? Three points or four points behind Bear and Mike in the East division? That close to uh, winning both divisions. Was fishing both divisions advantageous in any way? And if so, how or why not? I mean, fishing both, um, you know, we, it's just spending time on the water, you know, and, um, you know, in the tournaments, you know, the more experience you get in a tournament, you know, I think, I think the better you'll do. Um, and that would say that would be the advantage is spending time on the water. Thank you, Mark. Next question is for you, Steve. Similar, I asked Bear, but different in the sense that practicing bodies of water that you are familiar with. You've been fishing for a couple of years. 
Talking about practice of bias, where you are familiar with, is it important? And how do you do it? Uh, I think it's very important because you know the weeds change, the bait changes different places. You know, the fish aren't always in the same area, or they're not always on the spot, the target spot. They might be off or something. Um, so I think it's very advantageous to, especially on small bodies of water, because there's not a whole lot of good spots, and everybody seems to know them, especially with the electronics there is this these days. You know, it's easy to find fish or easier. So I think it's very advantageous. Thank you, Steve. Fair next question for you. When Mike allows you to uh, give some feedback. <laughs> I never said <laughs> <laughs> I think we all heard it that way. This is okay. It works for you guys. 21st century. We're open minded, though. Okay, Fair. How do you target larger fish? Bigger bait. Crouching tiger. Sit down in the bottom of the boat. There you go. Crouching, <laughs> crouching tiger. Crouching tiger. I, anyways, I guess I think you gotta you gotta look at what size fish you're expecting to catch on the lake. Uh, what lake you're on, and what it's gonna take to win, and what size fish you need to catch. And then I go from there when I'm practicing or whatever. If it's body water I'm not ever been on, if I'm catching one pounders and it's catch it's taken. Three pounders, eleven to three pounders to land. I know those aren't the right fish. Um, obviously, in the spawn, you find the biggest fish. Um, I guess just trying to find five of the fish you need to catch to win. So if they're three pounders, you're looking for three pounders. If they're two pounders in a lake, you're looking for two pounders. <laughs> Thank you. Well, we're not going to ask you your favorite color, right? <laughs> we, you, yeah, we got your stuff. We want to know the secrets in that here. Okay, but thank you, Barry. All right, Steve. During tournament, do you go after big fish right away, or do you try to get a limit first, which is more important? Well, it's important to catch the biggest fish, obviously, but it depends how your practice goes. I mean, if you're on big fish, you don't want to go try to catch small ones to begin with. Normally, the fish bite early in the morning, first thing. You want to try to catch the big ones first. Well, if you're bed fishing, you want to go for the biggest ones, obviously. <laughs> so, Mark. Thank you. Mark. Through observation, notice that you and Steve are very good at soaking an area on occasion. How do you decide? Soaking an area. Soak. Ah, let me rephrase. Let me rephrase. I got binoculars too, there. How do you decide to stay? <laughs> How do you decide to stay in an area versus leap and try in other areas? How do you make that decision? Well, when you're bed fishing, you know, you, you stay there. <laughs> <laughs> you no, you know, we had a couple of examples this year um, in a couple of tournaments where we found them pre fishing, we knew they were there, and it's a timing thing. I mean, it, it's like. We, you, you go there, you start, you don't catch them, but you know that they're there, you know that they're going to turn on, and, you know, we just keep, you know, we'll go back, and and when we find them, we sit there and we catch as many as we can. Thank you, Mark. All right, Mike, you're back up. Yay! I'll be beyond the fishing, in preparation for a tournament, like tomorrow. What do you do in preparation? Besides the fishing, I'm talking about actual fishing, but in your preparation, whether it's mental, on the boat, or whatever it might be, how do you prepare for your tournament? I guess normally I try to keep it light, uh, don't get too serious. I, I, you know, 
a lot of anxiety, I think, affects your fishing. So I think, I mean, the better mood you're in, I, I mean, I put myself in positions where I felt that I had to catch a limit and, you know, that just doesn't make for a fun day of fishing. So I, I don't know, keep it light. You know, what happens is going to happen, I guess, you know, on a day of fishing. And we're supposed to be all out here for fun. So, I mean, try to keep it as fun as you can, I guess. Thank you. We're almost done. Then John's up. Okay, Bear. <laughs> you have had, with Mike, but also with Heath, a lot of success in the RB. They won, you go back to last year, they won, what, four tournaments in a row to start this year, including last year's classic on White Lake, with a pink worm at White Lake. How do you explain your success? Because I, I truly believe who you're looking at is one of the toughest fields you're going to find in northern Indiana, southern Michigan. So how do you explain, or what has been that success for the explanation of success in the RB? I think a lot of it's uh, a lot of time on the water. Looking for, like I said earlier, the fish you need to win. Um, keying in on spots when you catch a fish, putting them together. Why was he there? What was he doing there? Finding areas that are the same. Um, I think a lot of it's getting along in the boat, too. I mean, it is getting along in the boat. Like, if we're fighting in a tournament, we'll be in last place. We're getting along, having a good time. Um, I can't tell you how much that means with everybody I've fished with. If you're getting along in the boat, that Mark Burt and John, just saying. Uh, honestly, though, if you're getting along with somebody in the boat and your, your ideas are the same, you know, we've fished long, together long enough. Um, you know, you say, that you think this will work? If he says no, and I really think it'll work, I'm like, yeah, well, let's go. Or vice versa. Um, if it, one of us really doesn't think it'll work. And, and I'm sitting there like, this ain't gonna freaking work. What the hell are we doing here? After he already said it, we ain't gonna catch nothing. Or the same way the other way around. Um, confidence for both partners, I think is a lot of, uh, a lot of what it takes. There's two people in a boat. If one guy can't win this every time. You got both your heads together to, to do it. I think Stephen Markles definitely agree with what I'm talking about. All right, and the last question goes back to Mike. Back to Mike. See, it was really <laughs> something important, Mike, that you do that you think is overlooked by many others. Um, you know, I can't speak for anybody else. Uh, a lot. I would have credit to a lot to our success is uh, time on the water. I mean that is everything. Uh, there was time in my life where all I wanted was recognition, and I I don't know. It's time on the water. Uh, I don't think that I'm any better than anybody else here. It's it's practice, 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 practice. It's time on the water. And you do that, you know where the fish are at, you'll have a good idea of where you're supposed to be any time of year if you're on the water all the time. That's that's what I would credit to. All right, thank you. Now, before we get off the hook, I'm going to hand this thing off for one question <laughs> by our own John Moore here. Well, I appreciate your time. <laughs> and Andy Buss, you know, a lot of guys say he's wrong, but he's right about one thing. I am. <laughs> so, uh, John and I talk about it an awful lot. And, you know, you see us at the ramp, and where are you? But I know he talks to you, Mark, an awful lot over at Wall Street. And I've been to both Mike and Barry's houses. We hang out together. And most of the time, these guys are fishing. And I would just like for you to share with everybody what kind of percentage of your free time you think you spend on the water. Because I know when I call those two guys, and we live close together, and 
you know, we have some hijinks, but most of the time they're fishing. So I'd like to know what you think, free time wise, you spend on the water. And, and Mark and Steve as well, because clearly it shows. You guys are spanking everybody in the field, so you're spending a lot of time there. How much time do you think you spend? How much time I say per week they're spending on the water? Percent of their free time. Percent of their free time is spent on the water. Start with Bayer, go right now. I, I honestly don't spend hardly any of mine this time of year. Um, Hold on. This, in the springtime. Pre Tabitha. <laughs> That's what's the time. Before that, I was trying to find someone like her, so. I was spending more time in the bar than I was pre fishing. <laughs> no, in the in the spring I do, but this time of year, you know, traveling like this, not that much. Not as much as we should, honestly. Might spend more than more than I do. Uh, I'm gonna refer back to when I was looking for recognition. Uh, there would be times where I would be out on the water every day for a month straight. Uh, not so much anymore. I kind of rely more now on past experience. I think on some of these local lakes, I mean, I've seen pretty much all of these local lakes, especially around home. I've seen most of these lakes, so I know kind of where I need to be, depending on the time of the year and what's going on. So I'm not on the water as much as I used to be. Like being up here right now, I wish I would have had more time to practice. Like a week more. But, you know, yeah. being that I'm not a professional fisherman, I have to work. That didn't allow me the time up here that I wanted. So, uh, I mean, I would encourage people, if you want to be really good, time on the water. Uh, like Mike, I, I think earlier in my years, I, I spent probably at least three, four evenings a week on the water, and plus Saturday and Sunday, both. I, was, I have a wife, but I have no children, so she does what she wants to do, and I do what I want to do. <laughs> That's the way it is. It's <laughs> either fishing or hunting for me. Yeah, he spends a lot more time on the water than I do. Yeah, I'm an eight to five guy. Um, I don't get out a whole lot. Use up my my vacations and stuff to come out and do a little free fishing, but you can always use I could always use a lot more time on the water. <laughs> you know, I will say too that you know the better you get to know a lake, it, it's the easier, <laughs> easier it is to free fish. I mean, because you yeah, know yeah, what you're looking for, uh, especially the time of the year. Too, I guess. I guess I shouldn't say I wasn't pre fishing. I still fish probably four or five tournaments a week. During the summer, so <laughs> that's you said pre-fishing. I guess no, fishing I four tournaments a week, maybe five is. Uh, yeah, I guess that's fishing time on the water. <laughs> Almost every day. Oh yeah. <laughs> Almost as much as I'm in a tree stander, I'd like to be right now. There you go. If we can recognize one final time our 2017 RB Super Bowl. Congratulations and thank you, gentlemen, for putting up with us. Your success is amazing. Thanks, Andy. Okay, let's get down to business. We got a tournament to fish tomorrow. A couple quick things about tomorrow. First off, I know I know I get a, I get a, I get teased. You talk too much. You you cover too much. Why do you have a meeting? Here, here's why we have a meeting. I fished tournament this summer on Western Lake with Jason Ginder. We had a fish that was not doing good in the live well, and we caught one that was slightly larger. Welcome, thank you. It was a little bit bigger, and we we could have called it out, but we weren't sure what the dead fish penalty was. There was no pre-tournament meeting. Got on the phone, looked up online, they don't have a website, information on there. Now, yes, I could have and should have called them. I did have a phone number, called her, but I just didn't do so. But that information I gave it to me. We didn't call the fish out, it died, we ended up getting a penalty. A one pound penalty for a dead fish. It's my fault. Totally my fault. We take, uh, we take credit for that. But 
We didn't have that information either. So our jobs are being nine years ago to decide if we start late because we're getting information to you, that's worth it. We want you to have the information. So that's always been our philosophy. So here we go. Tomorrow, take off vote number 45. Where are you at? You are call vote. Number 45, if you see at the ramp tomorrow morning someone with paper plates as number 45, please let them cut there. The most important people to get on the water first thing tomorrow. Go out to where you feel is a safe place to let people take off at 8 o'clock. <laughs> at, at least, at least a couple feet from the ramp, right? So, at 8 o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but at 8 o'clock, according to your GPS or your cell phone, you're calling vote 1. Vote 1, my bear is not there, you go on to 2. There is nothing going on in the morning. Your responsibility is to get there, dump your boat in water, and get ready to go. There's no check-in, don't have to worry about anything. We are starting. We're going to start on time. You don't hear me say it very often in R&B, huh? That's worth a round of applause, and then we're going to start on time. Yeah. All right. So anyway, uh, it, use common sense too. If you're both 40 and it's getting tight, and when both three shows up, please let them launch right away as well. Um, with that said, you've seen a ramp, and there's not a lot of space there. So what I'm going to ask you to do is help each other out. As you dump your boat in the water, uh, your partner parking their, their rig, you see someone else looking for their partner, hop on someone else's boat, give someone a ride out to the water and find their partner and let them hop on. There's not a lot of room there. Your partner's going to come back to the ramp, hop on someone else's boat who just launched. And two or three people are hopping on boats, getting out there. Things are going to go a lot smoother. Get rid of the congestion at the ramp. We don't want fender fenders, and, and we want to get things moving as smooth as possible. Does that make sense? Are there any questions? Good. Calling is done during tournament hours. Tournament will end at 4 o'clock sharp. If you were calling at 401, that's breaking the rules. Did I see hand go up? No? Okay. Right here. Yes, Steve. I've heard that too. Nope. We're not going to change. We did discuss that. We heard that concern as well that's been brought to us. The thing is this we're expecting strong winds tomorrow it's out of the south. And not all of us have big boats and have big body of water experience. And what we are not going to do is have people go on this ramp where the wind is going to be blowing really hard when the safest water is, what, seven, eight miles that direction. So we're not going to shove people in this rough water. Now, if by chance we show up tomorrow morning and it is dry, the water is gone, I can tell you we will, well, we're not canceling, but we will come right to the ramp right next door on the south side of the building. Beautiful ramp as well. We'll park. We'll take off there. And if that happens, well, myself or John or Jim or Greg will be at the ramp saying, "Go, go back up there. We'll, we'll take off there." And then, yeah, we're probably going to start late. But I don't anticipate that actually happening. Do I expect water level to go down? Yep. Do I expect it to be tough? Yes. Do I expect that we will have to communicate with each other and work with each other to make sure everything goes with it? Yes. But I don't anticipate all the water being gone. Okay. You may use any weigh bag if you have your own or, or ours. Dead fish penalty is a quarter pound, and you cannot you weigh a dead fish for your big fish. Uh, short fish is the penalty of short fish is the loss of your big bass. So you don't want to bring in short fish. Sportsmanship is always number one importance. Uh, uh, you saw the parade at the ramp this morning. I anticipate people to be there. I had a, a lady yelling out at the second floor at hotel at me this afternoon asking what time the weigh-in is to tomorrow. So we expect people there. We also expect you to show excellent sportsmanship, including watch your language in particular when children are around. Our weigh-in is going to be streamed live as well on MegaWare Keel Guard's Facebook page. So we want to represent ourselves professionally and make a good statement for the Army Bass Circuit, but for fishermen, and in this case, uh, national company, the MegaWare Keel Guard. Weigh-in procedure is going to be a little different than normal, a little more formal, I shall say. If this is where our weigh-in stage is taking place, you will first check in with Greg Reckaway, who will have a tub. He's checking your fish for short fish. He's not dumping your water out. He's checking for short fish. You then move next in line, which will be Jim Graham. You will check in with him. He has the computer. When it's your turn, you'll come to me. At the, we'll call it stage, if you will. 
There'll be a table in our, our scale and maybe we're banner behind us and we will weigh your fish there. But it's a three-step process there. The one requirement we are asking, you show up with both partners. Okay, what we are going to do is ask, ask to take your picture when you're up on the stage. Hold your fish up. Wait, uh, well, John's going to have a walk around with Big Fan's camera, take your pictures, take your picture, we'll weigh them, and then you're free to exit. But we're asking that both of you come and weigh your fish. <laughs> Except for the poor John, I'm fish by himself. Any questions? Yes, sir. What do we do if at noon it blows the water out? The ramp? When picks you, up? First, you'll probably call me bad names. I understand it. It's not going to happen. How's that for an option? There you go. More. I just, the wind was pretty similar. It's a little bit different, and that water doesn't push that hard. We're fishermen, so we're always worrying about something. I, I, I don't anticipate that happening. I really don't. I know it's a concern. You're talking uh, a lot of water being blown out. Um, we are supposed to get plenty of rain tonight. We are the rain coat bass boots, rain coat boots circuit. Yes. When Greg is, when you're checking shore fish with Greg, you are, he has a, a bump stick there, courtesy bump stick. They may check for, they may check right there in front of you. They'll communicate that, they'll communicate that with Greg. Hey, I want to check one fish first. So you do have a courtesy bump as always. Okay. We're going to do some, hand out some prizes. We've got some real good prizes. We'll get those tickets ready. And then we're, you stay and play cards. Remember the proceeds of the, Poker is going to go to our classic tomorrow. And now we got a whole bunch of stuff to give away. Yeah, you're going to need to pull your boat out to weigh your fish. Yes, sir. Four o'clock. Where do you have to be? Thank you. Good question. You have to be out in front, off plane. 100 feet, 150 feet. A lot of that depends on how many boats are out there. Safety is number one. So we don't. Want you, if I say 50 feet. Or 100 feet, and you got 20 boats there. I don't want you doing that. So as long as you're up there, not fishing at four o'clock. Okay. So first prize is going to be a Pro X Outfitters T-shirt. And we got 10 prizes to give away. Last one is $440, I believe, cash. We got over $600 in prizes to give out here. The Pro X Outfitters T-shirt. Last four digits are four seven eight four. Four seven eight four. Four seven eight four. And you are right. Oh, no. okay. <laughs> next next prize up is going to be from the Indiana State Police. It's a very nice uh, pocket knife and t-shirt. Uh, t-shirt, excuse me. Baseball cap. We of course support and love our, our law enforcement. Last four numbers are 4815. 4815. Mr. Truex, very good. 4815. Another Indiana State Police hat and pocket knife. The last four digits are 4699. 4699. Next one up. Is a Pro X Outfitters hoodie. Last four digits are four eight four one four eight four one. Very good. Next one is for Granite Creations baseball cap with a hundred dollar bill attached to it. Last four digits four seven. Zero zero four seven zero zero. Mr. Felix on fire. <coughs> Next one is another Grant Creations baseball cap with a hundred dollar bill attached. Four nine three six. Four nine three six. Four nine three six. Come on up. Now for a mega wear Skegguard. 
I know Rodney Fannin is really hoping to win this one after his little incident in the sandbar yesterday. And this is actually a certificate for a skate guard. Last four digits, four six eight zero. Four six eight zero. Four six eight zero. Very good. Lena Gus Bates, Randy Kefka. Next one is for a MegaWare Flex Step Pro. Last four digits, four nine zero eight. Four nine zero eight. Does that count for tomorrow? <laughs> <laughs> it is on. It has to be on there. You got to put it on tonight. Yes, sir. We got a winner winner. Chicken dinner. <laughs> Megaware Kill Guard has given me $1,000 cash as well. The top finisher with a flex step tomorrow has got 250 bucks cash coming to him. Top winner, or should I say, the top finisher with a step guard attached to their boat. We'll have a two hundred and fifty dollars cash to give it to him. And the top finisher with a keel guard attached to both got five hundred dollars cash coming to him. So we cannot thank Mega Work Keel Guard enough for how they spoil us even thousand dollars cash over five hundred dollars in product. Thank you very much. And this year is a certificate for an eight foot keel guard. Price value is nearly two hundred dollars. Four eight three nine. Four eight three nine. Four eight three nine. Four eight three nine. Is it you that winner? Yes, sir. All right. How much is this? All right, and the money four hundred forty-one dollars in cash here. Four hundred forty-one dollars cash. Last four digits are four seven. Two seven. Four seven two seven. All right. He's actually the one I asked to split up the money. Thank you so much for your time and attention. I know it's late. Feel free to stick around, play cards, ask somebody to pop. Be careful getting home and the words of the big John McCarthy tomorrow morning. Let's get it on.